Hi ladies, welcome. We are so excited to have you. We're gonna wait for you to hop on here. Let me see if it's going. Let's see here. How's everyone doing tonight? Let's see, oh, there we are. We're live. We see you joining. This is so fun. All right. Well, if you could just let us know who you are, where you're joining from, what kind of snack you're enjoying tonight. We would love to see who is watching with us. Hello, how are you? This is just a joy to be able to um, use technology in a way to, um, to just talk about mentoring and about God and um, I'm going to tag a couple people here that weren't sure how this is going to work. Let's see if this is going to work. Um, they weren't quite, there we go. There's Shelly, you should get the invite now. So if you see Shelly, that's, she wasn't sure how to find us. So I was just trying to help her navigate through. Oh, there's Elisa. Hello. Right. Let us know who you are. It's way more fun to uh, feel like we're talking to people and not just the my husband's phone that's attached right now. We're in Lisa's house. Welcome. It's, yeah. So fun to be here. Um, we ask you to grab snacks and to get comfortable. Did anybody get comfortable tonight? So, what are you wearing? Are you wearing pajamas already? <laughs> are you? <laughs> Yeah, are you your slippers? Exactly. It's a little toasty out there tonight. Um, and there's also a delay too, so I kind of forget about that with technology. There's a slight delay. Okay, so ask the question. Not to uh -huh. go off of that. And just yes, it'll be. <laughs> All right. Well, as people are jumping on. Um, I would just love to give a little introduction. My name is Michaela Norton, and I'm the Women's Director at Christ Community Church. Um, it is such a fun job. I love getting to interact with women and help them connect with Jesus and help them find community, and um, there's just so many things that are going on. Um, I have three little kids, six, four, and two, so they keep me really busy, too, um, and I actually been doing this for, uh-oh, is it going? Oh, sorry, got a little scared there because I didn't see it go. Uh, there we go. Um, so I've been the women's director for just about two years and been married to my husband for almost 10 years. My anniversary and my work anniversary are one day apart, from the 17th and the 18th of this month. Um, so life is full and it is um, fun and I'm just learning how to depend on God um, literally every day for and every hour sometimes just for his um, grace and provision in my life and direction so it's a lot to juggle it is it is but you're doing a fantastic job well thank you and so for all of us who are part of Christ's community I know I speak for all of us that Michaela we are so thankful for you mm -hmm. in your heart for the Lord and for us and even just doing something like this so thank you Yes, I am. I love it. And so, Lisa, can you tell us a little bit about you? Sure. I am. Um, for those of you who do go to Christ Community, you may know my husband, Reed. I kind of looked at the list, and there's a lot of names I have. Uh, I'm not familiar with, and I haven't met you. So, as a calling to come to Christ Community, and he has been there for 16 years. He's in the adult discipleship department, and he and Michaela are actually the adult team. And so. Yes. It's a, a privilege not only as just being a friend with Michaela, but that this is um, part of Reed's ministry as well. So mm -hmm. it's a real treat. But we also have three children. One, our oldest, is um, in his 20s. And he lives in Dallas working at a firm called True North. He has a darling girlfriend, and there's great potential there. So we're super excited for this next year and what we have for them. Um, our middle son, Brett, lives in Omaha. And our daughter, Lauren, and her husband are in Austin. So we've got two in Texas and one here. 
and um, we lived here 16 years and just love Omaha. I'm a Texas girl, <laughs> and so I'm excited. I think in two weeks I'm heading down and gonna go visit them and in the heat. Yeah. So. That's yeah. So good. But just thrilled to be a part of this. So Michaela, thank you for including me. Of course. Thanks yeah. for saying yes. I mm -hmm. love it. Um, well, as we get started, um, I have a story to tell you about a plant and a friend of mine, she was moving away and she gave me her, her plant and we call it our little uh, friendship fern, even though it's not a fern, but, um, it was sitting in my living room and it was not looking too good. It, um, was a little brown and I decided to move it out to the front porch. Um, and in doing so, in a matter of just weeks, it has changed so drastically. There, it's growing um, new shoots, it's green, it's vibrant, it's flourishing. And flourishing is just this word that just brings life. And so um, the plant needed a change of environment mm -hmm. from you know just sitting on the floor, not getting much sunlight, to being outside um, and getting that sun, sunshine and probably a little bit more water too. Mm -hmm. um, and ladies, I just wanted to um, take this time to just um, encourage you to flourish. Mm -hmm. That I desire for us to be women who are spending time in the Word and with others who are pointing us to Jesus. And so that's what this night is about, about helping us to be women who really flourish in our walk with the Lord. Yeah. Um, so as we talk about mentoring, Lisa, can you just tell us what does it mean to mentor? Sure. We're just going to jump into yes. this, this whole conversation about mentoring. And so the question is, what is mentoring? You know, I think out of everything that I've learned, all of my experiences, all the books that I've read, anything that I read in scripture, the probably bottom line, simple way of saying it, it's an opportunity to bring value to somebody's life. Mm -hmm. And there is such a privilege and um, just, I don't know if it's a blessing or um, just this fullness that comes from walking with another woman as she's growing in her relationship with the Lord and as she is pursuing um, being more like Jesus and becoming a disciple and growing in that, that we get to walk alongside of that. Being a mentor is just truly bringing value and helping somebody else grow. Mm -hmm. And we talk about spiritual mentoring. There's all kinds of mentoring we could do. Mm -hmm. um, and I know a lot of you who commented on the questions that we ask have different ways that you're mentoring. Mm -hmm. For us, mentoring is truly helping somebody else see Jesus, point them to who he is and the life that he brings. Um, if you don't mind, I yes. have a verse. It seems like the last couple months, has this not been the craziest few months for all of us? So crazy. I mean, we've had COVID, we've had protest with everything going on with mm. politics and mm -hmm. just learning to do life. I think of you guys and all of you who have had children in school and having to be mm -hmm. homeschool moms and all the different challenges that we've it's had. It really has. And a few months ago, I started reading this verse and it has just been the verse that's really just walked me through. And it's in Romans 8, 5 through 6. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Mm -hmm. And I just think Jesus came to give us life. Mm -hmm. He came to give us life abundant, not just that we survive like that plant you were talking about. Mm -hmm. He wants us to thrive and to flourish. And I know most of us, and if you're joining in with us, I would say that you are um, in this group, but that we wanna be women who are fulfilled, that have purpose, that have meaning, um, we want to be women that thrive, and I think the only way we are ever going to be satisfied and the only way we are ever truly going to thrive, and I think that's why we love spiritual mentoring, is really going to Jesus, letting him be the thing that satisfies us. So when we talk about mentoring, we have the opportunity to bring Jesus to people who is life and peace and all of these things, and we just uh, have a, a mandate and a privilege to be able to do that. So I just think sometimes we get so caught up in mentoring being more formal and maybe a little more in a 
like activity or a program. Mm -hmm. And when you look at scripture, he tells us in Matthew 28 to go and to make disciples. And when you look in the book of Matthew 2, he tells us, come follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Mm -hmm. He's given us a mandate and it's part of our identity of being disciples of Jesus, that we would be women that just naturally follow him, that we have fruitful lives because we're allowing him to live through us. We're hopefully women that are standing on God's word. So there's truth and there's um, value from this word that we have to offer. And he just has so much more for us that it's not, it doesn't have to be dependent on a program or a structure. Mm -hmm. It's not an activity. We're not trying to sign you up for anything. We're really just trying to make the point of truly, as you look in scripture, we are called to make disciples. Mm -hmm. And when you look at Titus 2, mm -hmm. really the way that we are going to be healthy inside and outside of the church is to be women who are investing in other women. For those of us who are farther along in the process, that we would be intentional to invest in a woman that isn't as far along. Yes, I love that word, intentional. Mm -hmm. um, and before we get any further, I just want to stop and mm -hmm. say hello to our friends that are joining. Kathy, you're joining us from your patio. That's awesome. Nice. And hi, Jess. And Tammy, it is so good to have you here. Um, and we know, hi, Diane, you finally made it. I know sometimes it can be a little tricky to navigate where to find um, certain things. So, And some of you may be watching later, and we just want to say a special hello to you as well um, and grateful for technology that you can um, re-watch at a later time. Um, and so, Lisa, you just unpacked a lot of um, information about mentoring. It was so good and just how it's a lifestyle. It's a calling of what we're supposed to do as um, women who follow after the Lord. And um, But how does that look like practically? Well, and I think too, I loved your comments. Thank you so much for yes. taking the time for those of you who did give us some feedback on that question that Michaela put out. Even just getting that poll of knowing kind of where you guys stand. Mm -hmm. I think so many times we look at mentoring again like it is got to be a structure or a program. And I think if we just understood that it's relationship mm -hmm. and it's friendship. Yes. And it's bringing intention into those relationships. Um, a few summers ago I had invited two different groups of women at different times. And I was actually going through a book that I think we have here called Adorned by Nancy Lee DeMoss. And it's the book of Titus broken down verse by verse. It is so powerful. If you're looking at, if you want a resource to really go through that whole Titus, those verses, I would really recommend Adorned by Nancy Lee DeMoss. And I had invited women into our home and excuse our dog, you know, <laughs> Michaela real life. wanted to come here to get away <laughs> from the it. chaos of children so she can focus and don't become here for I didn't even notice. I really <laughs> didn't. <laughs> yeah. It's real life. It this is. is. This is what we do. So now. we have Reed and Jonathan here. Jonathan's mm -hmm. helping with the technology and right. Reed's yep. got gender duty. Yes. <laughs> they must have walked outside and left the dogs. <laughs> well, She's just cheering yes. on all of us who are interested in mentoring. So, But this book, Adorned, I just laugh. Where did they go? Where did our husband say on the side? <laughs> They're tasting mulberries off the tree. <laughs> they really are. Oh, that's so funny. We've just been praying for this time, guys, that ladies, that it would just be a blessing to you. We want it just to be real. Um, like, we are real women. We have real conversations. And we want you to um, also just interact with us in the comments as we're talking. Anytime you have questions or if you um, – look at all the – the little <laughs> – <laughs> yeah. um, Anytime you have thoughts, just please feel free. Uh, just to have a conversation. That's why it's called a conversation about mentoring because it's not just us having a conversation together, but really um, with you as well. So if there's a book that we mentioned and you've read it, we would love to know. Um, it makes it fun. We love to go back and read the comments. Um, Shelly joined us. Deb, Jereen, hello. Kelly, let's see the dog love at it. half time. Okay, <laughs> we'll bring her in. Says. She's 15 and she can't hear... <laughs> She's cute. Anything, and she's got little attitude. She's a little Pomeranian, so. Yes. Yeah, my little friend. But anyway, I was talking about adorned and inviting women to our home 
two summers ago doing two different book clubs using that book. And I started out by including and inviting women who I thought were already really inviting women, mentoring women, thinking I'm going to start with my friends who just already do this. And I learned so much that summer by having those different groups. One of the main things was I was so surprised when I asked these women who they were mentoring. So many of them said they didn't have the capacity to invite a woman into their life, that they had full-time jobs. They, some of them have maybe 10 grandchildren, and they just didn't feel like they had the margin to include anybody else. And so as we talked through their life, one of the friends of mine said, you know, my priority right now is one of my daughters has a special needs child and so that is my priority and I said well I think you're just thinking about mentoring and you have this expectation and it's really you already are mentoring you are mentoring your daughter and I know she's mentoring a lot of other women that she's in life with every day but what she didn't realize is that she is already doing it mm -hmm. and I just challenged her and just we talked through this and I said you know it really is just asking God to give you eyes to see the women around you and asking him to just give you wisdom on who you should invest in. And really, it's so much about this is prayer, mm -hmm. truly committing this to prayer and asking God to give you his eyes. Yes. And then when he gives you those different people that he kind of tends to you know, give you just that sense of that you should be leaning in and maybe inviting them into your life, it could just be like my friend, when she goes to meet with her daughter and her, and her grandchild, mm -hmm. be more intentional about those meetings. And so maybe it's that instead of just going over and folding laundry or helping her with her grandson, praying through what are things that she could bring to bring spiritual life to her daughter, mm -hmm. whether it's a devotional or if it's just praying for her or asking really pointed questions that her daughter would feel heard and inspired and encouraged to grow in her relationship with the Lord. So sometimes we think it has to be this big thing and really so many of the times we are already doing it. But I think one of our biggest words and what we want to communicate, it really is just living a life of intention. I love that. Uh, so, uh, oh, thank you, Tammy. You just answered the question. Uh, looks like you're taking notes. That's so fun. Um, Deb had asked awesome. for that yes. verse, so thank you for answering that already. Um, and the dog quieted down, I so guess yes. she must have fallen asleep. <laughs> um, okay, so we've talked about just the importance of intentionality, mm -hmm. and really, I think, ladies, that is just a really important word, word to remember, um, is what are you doing in your life that, how can you just take it to the next level? Mm -hmm. um, and then... Okay, so we also kind of get a little confused with the word mentoring. What Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes. Okay. Well, I think you're referring yes. to, I mean, you hear Just, the words discipleship. We hear the words mentoring. Mm -hmm. There's spiritual formation. There's all these different words. And I think um, when you look at scripture, when you... For me, it's just going back to the life of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And when you look, and if you've been going through that amazing series chosen or mm -hmm. the chosen mm -hmm. it was such a beautiful picture to me as Jesus is inviting each of these disciples to come and follow him and I just think about um, really like we mentioned before Matthew 28 he tells us to go in his name and his authority and to make disciples mm -hmm. and the way that Jesus did that was by inviting those 12 men into his life mm -hmm. and when you think about Jesus life like I would love your comments on this too mm -hmm. what were those things that he did Mm -hmm. How did Jesus love and mentor and disciple and care for and mm -hmm. pray over? And I mean, Jesus did things where he imparted ministry opportunities and gave them to the disciples. He trusted them. Mm -hmm. He was their friend. He And I love the word, like, like there was an invitation. He said, come mm -hmm. and follow me. Mm -hmm. um, and he said that over and over. Come and see. Come and watch. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think we get caught up, is it discipleship, is it mentoring? There's so many different ways that we grow in our relationship with the Lord, but I think mentoring is very much a relational mm -hmm. type of life on life. To me, that's the easiest way to explain it. It's just one life on another life, mm -hmm. and you just care for each other, and you walk alongside in proximity with each other. Mm -hmm. You 
model. I mean, there's so many times that I just pray that God gives me favor and he helps me model in a way that would be pleasing to him so that when Michaela goes through something, she can refer back to how she watched me go through something. And, yes. you know, I just, I pray that there's fruit in my life, that the fruit of the spirit is the things that are what impact you and what makes your life better because I'm walking with the Lord and trusting him to do that for me. And so it could be mentoring, it could be discipleship. Mm -hmm. There's, I don't think we get caught up in the, the term of it. Mm -hmm. I think it's more just the heartbeat behind it. And it's just that we surrender our lives for if the Lord wants to use us in another life, that we say yes, that we bring intention to that, that we trust him for it. And I think bottom line, it isn't only prayer, but it is truly being a woman who spends time in God's word. When we are hearing from him, when he's speaking to our hearts, when he's convicting us, he's growing us. And those are the fruits that come out of our life that we would hope a, a younger woman or another woman would want to learn from. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're watching today and you're looking, you're wanting answers on, well, how do I find a mentor? Or um, I want to be a mentor, but I just feel, um, you know, anxious about that or I don't feel qualified. And we're going to um, get to a lot of those questions mm -hmm. today. Um, and I'm hoping if you can just give me a thumbs up that this is working because on my screen it's paused and so if you see me looking a little uh, like what's happening technology um, we're just here sitting in the front room by ourselves hoping this is working okay and I just keep refreshing it okay there's Elisa giving a thumbs up so Good. thank you thank you for saying that you're with us I appreciate that so should I share a little story about just, you kind of already said that I'm, uh, that you're my mentor. Mm -hmm. So um, I would love to just share a little bit about how that happened. Um, if we can go there. Great. Okay. Well, so many of you asked, so you're kind yeah. of answering the question, how do you find a mentor? And we're going to go into that in different ways, but mm -hmm. I think I would love for you to share just yes. your own experience. Yeah. Okay. So um, I've had different people in my life be a mentor to me. Um, and then a couple years ago, I um, was in a season and I asked a lady to mentor me um, and she said no. And so um, I did not take that as um, rejection, but I really saw it as somebody who um, knew her schedule. And I learned so much from her that she, she actually didn't say no right away. She's like, well, let me pray about it. And then she got back to me. She said, it's just not going to work right now. I've got a lot of different things going on. And I just, I loved her even more for saying no. Um, and I knew, so I kept praying. I was really praying that God would just put somebody in my life. And, um, Lisa and I had started working together a little bit with different things. Our paths were crossing. And so after meeting one day, I called her up and I said, Lisa, will you mentor me? And would you just intentionally invest in my life? And it has just been um, the sweetest, I think it's been about a year, a little mm -hmm. over a year, last summer and or longer. I don't know. The days all run together these days. Mm -hmm. um, and it has just been so um, life-giving to me to have somebody that is checking on me and that we can meet together. And um, our meetings look different mm -hmm. often, but... Yeah. Some of my favorite things that we have done together is just read scripture. And we'll kind of talk about that a little bit more um, about just different, what do you do when you're mentoring? Um, what does that experience look like? But well, just, you're kind of bringing up when you're asking, how do you go about finding a mentor? Basically, it is a little risky because mm -hmm. you are a little vulnerable when you're pursuing inviting somebody into your life. It could go either way. The one that's being asked to mentor or, um, you know, both relationships, it is a little that you're vulnerable in asking. Mm -hmm. But I really believe when you do pray and you ask, your heart is so much to want what God wants that you don't see it as rejection. You mm -hmm. just see it as him closing a door yeah. to really direct you to the person he has for you during that time. Mm -hmm. And I think of a woman, uh, I was in O'Neill a few months ago, and I was actually doing a talk on mentoring to a church there. And at when we were wrapping up, this darling woman, it was winter still, and she had a little scarf around her head and this big <laughs> coat, and she came over and she said, you know, everybody probably wants to tell you their story about mentoring. She goes, but our church has a program and they match you up, and I've been in this program for four years, and every year, no one has ever wanted me mm. to be their mentor. 
And she goes, but I keep putting my name in there because I want to be available and if God wants to use me. But she said, this year I did something different. And she sat there with that little scarf and she goes, I'm a little quirky and I'm a little weird. And it just made me love her so much because how sweet and refreshing is that? Mm -hmm. And she goes, I can understand why some women wouldn't want me, but I know that if God's calling me to do this, he can use me. So she said, I just asked the really nice ladies to just take me off the list. And she goes, I began to pray and say, God, if you want me to do this, would you just bring that woman into my life? Mm -hmm. And so she said, as I prayed, I was just in a conversation with a young woman who was newly married and was now a stepmother. And she said, I'm now a stepmother and I have no idea what I'm doing. Do you know of anybody who would just meet with me and just help me learn what it means to be a stepmother? And this woman said, I told her, I said, you know, I, I'm a stepmother mm -hmm. and wow. I would love to get together with you. And if there's anything I can do to encourage you or to tell you what I've gone through, I would love to do that. And so she made a point to say that God will work through this, even though there may be some hurt feelings or rejection kind of. Mm -hmm. um, our heart is so much to want what he wants and so I think she just didn't give up and she trusted him and then now she's in this really sweet what she was explaining that they have such a sweet genuine relationship mm -hmm. and God just orchestrated that and he can do that I love that because it just shows the power of prayer he had his heart at just being so open to whatever God wanted and she really could have left that experience being kind of bitter towards mm -hmm. that, like not being chosen. And mm -hmm. um, I love that God, she allowed God to work um, in that. And what a beautiful relationship. Like obviously God had that all planned out. He did. Um, with that story, especially just the lion well, stepmom. Like that's so specific. It and is. That's well, and that's works. such a huge part of this too, is we have expectations. Mm -hmm. Some of us have had people who have mentored us. Some of us have mm -hmm. never had that. And maybe that can make us feel disqualified from mentoring because we've never seen it and I think if there's one thing we could encourage you and one thing that we would hope you would hear is that God made each one of us so unique and so different and each of our life experiences and what we have to offer is so exactly what God has given us to offer that it's going to look different for every one of us there's not one set pattern of how mentoring looks and so if anything I would say be yourself yes. and that's all mm -hmm. you have to be and that's all mm -hmm. Michaela is that's all I am and when you find each other you just get to be you and so it's not hard it's not manufactured it's mm -hmm. truly you just offering a friendship and a mm -hmm. life and to just each other. the the power of the Holy Spirit working inside of you to be able to come alongside another woman um, and then one other story that we have, um, Emily was going to join us tonight and something came up, but she texted me and said she was praying for us. Yes. So, so sweet. She was in a book group that we did last summer mm -hmm. and she reached out to you afterwards um, and just said thank you, right? Mm -hmm. And um, asked you to pray for somebody um, to come into her life yes. to be a mentor. And so I had also been praying for someone to mentor and at the a staff meeting one time, Emily is um, one of our residents, and I was sitting right next to her, mm -hmm. and there was just something in her, like I just asked her to go to coffee one time after a meeting, I said, I would love to get to know you more and just connect with you, and we met the day after, or the week after Thrive actually, which is our women's conference, and it was just a sweet time of um, just talking to her and getting to know her and I think we talked for two hours and we could have just kept going um, because mm -hmm. our we just had so much fun together and um, a little while later she um, texted me she said would you um, mentor me and so our mentoring relationship I said yes of course and it started during COVID so our mm -hmm. first actual mentoring meeting um, was on FaceTime and so we met for an hour and um, I just asked her, you know, what are some things that you're interested in talking about? What are some, and she had, she came prepared. <laughs> she had different things and I prayed about it. I told her I would let her know um, just some different directions and options that we, how we could spend our time together. And it's just been so, so sweet mm -hmm. to, so Lisa here, you know, she's mentoring me and then I get an opportunity to mentor Emily. Um, and it's just a huge blessing. Yes. And um, Michaela's bringing up the idea of flourishing, and she brought up this idea of this plant. And I asked her yes. if I could show you guys this plant, if you had one of these. It's a spider plant or an airplane plant, and you probably recognize this. I love it. 
so pretty. It is. And so one of the young women in my life brought this over to me one day and she goes, I brought you this plant because it's a multiplying plant. Mm -hmm. And I love the way your life multiplies. And so truly, like when I look at Michaela and I see my life and my investment, my time, my purpose, all these things that I get to just pour into Michaela, it's so rewarding to me to think it's not only in Michaela's life, but she's taking those things that she's learning and that we're growing together. And she has that to offer somebody else. And so when you look at Jesus' life, he didn't add people as numbers, he multiplied his life. He invited those 12 men into his life, and those 12 were going to be the way he reached the world for himself. Mm -hmm. And so I think this plant produces these little shoots, and then you take these little shoots mm -hmm. when you want to, and you put them in water and let the roots grow, and then you replant them, and they just continue to multiply and make more Can plants. Can I have one of these? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to give you one. Okay. Yes, and she actually was talking about wanting each of you to have one really of these. wanted to. So we've done this with the Mom Up Mentor Mom. So if you're watching, you, Renita and Linda Bishop and Shirley, y'all got one of these little shoots and I have had a ball watching you send me pictures as that has grown because That's it's so just neat. a picture mm -hmm. of multiplication. So we don't want to just be women who are adding people to our life when I pray and invest in Michaela, my hope is that she takes these things and passes them on to somebody else. And so if we do that, we truly are going to be women who are impacting Nebraska and the world. Mm -hmm. It's not just, it's not small. It's a very big calling. Well, and one of those things it's, is, yeah, um, you, one of our first meetings, we did the SOAP Bible study method. And I love that you know yeah, where I was going. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> our special notebook. Mm -hmm. And uh, look at us. We're both doing, doing our <laughs> Okay, that's fun. Um, and so you did the SOAP Bible study method, and then that's what Emily and I have done. And so I had never done that method before, and mm -hmm. it's just as simple as finding a plan and going through a uh, scripture and then talking about it and praying about it and observing the text and um, and now that's what Emily and I have right. done. So you taught me that. And right. I taught her. And now so she can do it with others as well. Which exactly. she does. And so I want to say too, and I brought this, it's a little notebook. It's, you can get any spiral or just white pieces of paper. You don't have to have money mm -hmm. to feel like you mentor. Mm -hmm. You have your Bible and you have a notebook. And Julie Messner, if you're watching, you were the one that told uh, me about the sweet blessing. Um, is it? sweetblessings.com and you can go on there and download these pretty little scripture plans that you can do. There's one on encouragement. There's one on um, waiting on God. There's a whole There's list of different ways that you can be specific in going through the word together. But when Michaela and I were meeting for the first few times, She's a woman's director. She has three small children. Her life is full. And she said, honestly, what I would love to do the most with you is just be in the Word together. Mm -hmm. So Julie had told me about these. So I asked Michaela, here's all these different topics, I guess you could say. What would mean the most to you to go to, through together? And she goes, I just need encouragement. Mm -hmm. So the next time we got together, I brought her a little notebook. We each had our scripture plan, and we opened in first Peter two, mm -hmm. she was telling me how at that time of your life it was a really busy season mm -hmm. and you sat there when you sat down with me. Yeah. Do you remember? Yes, you go, I do. I'm like, I feel like I'm just not breathing. You said I can't I breathe. I can't breathe. <laughs> I can't breathe. <laughs> I did say that. You did. And I said, Well, we'll just sit here until you catch your breath and you're like, No, I literally think I have a breathing problem. Mm -hmm. And so it was such a poignant defining time in my mentoring life mm -hmm. because we open scripture in first Peter two talks about be anxious for nothing, but in everything, give him thanks and praise. Mm -hmm. And we just went through when she talks about soap. Um, soap is just basically you look at the scripture, you write it out, you observe what those verses say, you look to see how that applies, what the application is, and then you pray together. So our time that day, in a Starbucks, yes. was going through scripture together, talking that through, talking why you were anxious and all the things that were going on, and then we got to pray together. Mm -hmm. And it was so life-giving mm -hmm. 
there was so much peace that came from that. I mean, yeah. I left so joyful, mm -hmm. and I could even see in you just the transformation mm -hmm. that the Word and His Spirit does in yes. somebody's life. And that's not the only time either. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can think of another time that I was just, we were catching up, and then like, okay, let's do our soap, and then it was just that verse that I needed for that moment. Mm -hmm. And I love how God works, mm -hmm. and just the intentionality that... Um, just bringing scripture into our conversation and it our is. friendship. It is. I mean, that you just take it with intention again and you just be more specific to help grow spiritually. So many younger women have so many friends. They have enough friends. They need somebody that's somebody they trust, somebody mm -hmm. that they know is truly being like set apart to be that person that cares about their spiritual yeah. growth and that you just build that trust in that you know, relationship. Mm -hmm. But what's so fun for me is then when she told me that that's what she's doing with Emily, it was literally like she took this little principle mm -hmm. and then she just started multiplying. And Emily is leading all kinds of college women. Mm -hmm. Now she knows how to do this and she's doing it. Mm -hmm. And you just think it's multiplying and we're reaching, now your life is mm -hmm. multiplying and reaching all it's of those women. Thing. Yes all through what was the website it's right above Shelly um, I think Kathy she found the website sweetblessings.com so that's the right one I loved it. and you did if you spend a little time there's different ways the formatting there's like a half sheet if you have a smaller notebook or something and I think there's even like Spanish I mean there's like all there's so many there is. You so you kind of pick what topic you're really um, wanting to go through yes and I do want to say too when we're talking about another resource um, a lot of you know that I founded a ministry called Refresh Mentoring, and one of the things we wanted to do on a website is to offer resources for women. They're free. And if you go to refreshmentoring.org and you go to the resource page, we have these beautiful like magazine type um, looking resources that you can download. There's one for soap, that there's the whole soap method on there that you can just download that so you know exactly. They're just all these, um, there's one that's just a list of 65 questions that fosters more, you know, stimulates growth. Mm -hmm. There is one that I wanted to point out. This is the SOAP method um, that you can just download. Mm -hmm. But I would love for you to go on our website and there's so many things on there that would just help your time if you're going to invite somebody in to know different ways you can make that time very productive and yes. like and just intentional. intentional. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I wanted to say too is um, discovering your God-given personality. Oh, I love that. And when we're talking about being yourself, we have to know who we are. And I think we go through seasons that we kind of change. Maybe we've taken tests earlier in our life and we've just gotten so busy, we kind of lose who we are. and mm -hmm. We kind of don't know like what we have to offer or mm -hmm. who God has made us. Mm -hmm. And so I would really encourage you to go on the website or Michaela has resources. I'm sure you know a lot of different resources. But take time to like go back and really learn about yourself, who you are, who God's made you to be. At the bottom of that resource, there's the free different links to like the Enneagram or the Strengths Finder and all the free tests that you can take. And mm -hmm. I, I just They're think so helpful. they are just really taking time to know how God has made you so that you can be yourself mm -hmm. and that you can feel confident that you're understanding more of who he's made you. So you have that to give. Mm -hmm. There's also another resource on that page of writing your personal mission statement. And I think the process of writing your life mission statement can really help you just be more intentional and more purposeful and focused too. So all those resources, we definitely want you to take advantage of those. I love resources. That she does. Probably really one of my that. favorite things. I love resourcing people with um, just great content and things that will help you grow um, and refresh and train. You have so many um, resources on there. That's awesome. And we'll just continue as we're learning what people need and want to just add to that. So just know that that's a and when you were talking, it just reminded me of, as women, so often we can compare ourselves to others. Mm -hmm. And we can go, well, I can't do it because I can't do it like her. I'm not going to, I'm not her, so there's just no way. I've got too much. Or, um, and we can compare ourselves. Or, um, But I think we need to be so for each other. Like, okay, I'm not going to be like Lisa in my mentoring, but I'm going to learn from her. And I'm going to champion her and encourage her in what she's doing um and i think the enemy just wants to get in and cause us to be 
um, just look inward and say, well, you're not like her, so you should, probably shouldn't mm-hmm. even go and try. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just want to say, like, enough of that lie mm-hmm. because, the, I mean, we've said it lots of times tonight, be yourself. Yes. And, like, God has made you unique with the gifts and the um, just everything that you need in order to go and do this with another one. Absolutely. Um, whether that's you're doing that as the mentee or the mentor. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, it's just fun to see um, and know that God has a plan in all of this mm-hmm. and that we don't have to be women who um, compare ourselves. No. But then and he wants to. Yes, but I think you made another good point too that we need each other. Yeah. And we need to encourage each other. When Julie gave me that link to those um, Bible study plans, like I love that I have friends that are just always helping me grow and making me better. Mm -hmm. And I think of how many times I watch different pairs of mentors and the way they do it. And I think that is so beautiful to see how creative God is. And he likes all shapes and sizes. And Mm -hmm. for me, there's some women that I would not click with or I wouldn't be encouraging to them. I mean, it's just like they mm-hmm. have, God has the people just who he wants for each of us. And so we just have to yes, just keep being ourselves. I mean, it's so important mm-hmm. to not be anything but true to who you are and be mm-hmm. yourself. I mean, it just reminds me of Psalm 139, that God knit you and made you. Like he crafted you to be you mm-hmm. um, and not to be anybody else. So if that's something that you find yourself doing and looking at others and looking at other people's Instagram or Facebook or whatever their lives may be, um, I would just encourage you to um, ask God to help you um, be confident in who he's made you to be. So I don't know if there's questions or anything yeah. anybody's saying that we Dad can... had a great resource for doing so. Thank you so much for putting that on here. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Does anyone... Should we t- I'm going to ask if anybody has any questions. Sure. Should we do that? And then we can kind of jump back in. Um, If you guys have any questions, and while we're doing that, we can answer some that we already have Mm -hmm. written out. Um, Felicia, I know you're watching, and you asked, how how do you find a mentor? And so we touched on that, and I think a lot of that is, um, a huge part is prayer and being open and going to places Um, And that's really what we're passionate about, is creating environments where um, relationships can take place Mm -hmm. and encouraging women to create those environments, to take a risk by inviting a few women over to their house or meet at a park or go for a walk. Walking is a great way. I've been doing that a lot lately. It's just walking outdoors um, with ladies going on. um, uh, Sorry, Tammy has a great question here that we'll get to. so there's just lots of different ways mm-hmm. to find a mentor. Yes. Well, I think prayer is really big. Mm-hmm. Um, I have always tried to put myself in environments where I meet other women who are in different stages and ages of life. One of the ways that has always been really easy is through women's Bible study at Christ Community. And sometimes it means not sitting with your friends, but saying, I really am trusting God to bring women in my life that I can grow and potentially ask to be in this type of mentoring relationship. Mm -hmm. So maybe it means sitting at a table of other women that you get to know new people or signing up to serve at one of the city serves or different ways that you have to serve and just be looking around as you're doing that to see if there's those women in your life or in those um, situations Mm -hmm. that would potentially be somebody that you would invite for coffee or Mm -hmm. to go for a walk, Mm -hmm. something really simple. And I know that can feel scary, you know, to ask somebody to do that. Um, to go to coffee with you or um, and the first conversation doesn't have to be hey will you be my mentor but just say hey can we have coffee can we um, have tea can we go for a walk I would just love to um, or even easier is hey there's this great book that these ladies were talking about at my church (laughs) would you want to read that with me Um, and yes Tammy you asked if um, if these books we have on the table are ones that we would recommend. Yes, yes, definitely. And I'll show you some more. We're going to get to some action points. And so we've got some good things that we want to make sure that we Mm -hmm. build in time to do that because we really want to give you tools and resources and next steps. Mm -hmm. But I think too, when um, Felicia, you mentioned Margie being somebody that was somebody that you really saw as an inviter and created environments for people to come together and worship. 
And maybe it's somebody like her that you already kind of sense that you respect her and you like where she's going and you want to follow her. Mm -hmm. So it could just be that you take the next step and just take that next initiative, whether it's her leading something that you go and you say yes to so that you can get in her space, mm -hmm. or if it just really is as simple as just making that first invitation of just having time together. Mm -hmm. And I just think God tends to just start giving you more and more like attachment and mm -hmm. for Michaela and I mentoring is not hard it's a friendship I mean we just enjoy each other's friendship and so there's a lot of different ways some of you mentioned heart to heart that we used to provide from Christ Community as a, a heart to heart mentoring program mm -hmm. and I know Boots Backins was just really instrumental in that and one of the things that she did was can y'all hear our dog again? It's like, She's seriously, <laughs> she just, <laughs> <laughs> oh. but Boots was so intentional about inviting women into her home. I remember being new to Omaha and it was pretty soon, like a month after I was invited to her big table and she would have a teapot and tea and she would just have an afternoon tea. Mm -hmm. But around that table was all these random women from every age, different places, some from the church, some not from the church, mm -hmm. and she just created an environment for women to meet each other. Mm -hmm. And so that is one of the action points that we really want to even mention to you. There's this kind of neat opportunity, a church in Texas started it, and then the IF gathering even has adapted that in their IF table. Mm -hmm. And it's the simple thing of inviting what we would like to say six women to come sit around your table for four weeks mm -hmm. and spend two hours together. They have really that. taken it off of Acts 2, 4 to 6, mm -hmm. where they talk about that you gather around the table. Mm -hmm. And so it's yeah. two hours a week, four women. Um, six women sorry. for two hours, four times. There you go. And we'll totally write all this out yes. and we will walk through it with you if you choose to do this. Mm -hmm. But one of the easiest ways to meet other women is for us who will take that step just to create environments in our home or at a coffee shop. Stories is just a neat mm -hmm. new place. So and then just trust that in those relationships, people will meet each other and that there will be relationships that come out of that. Mm -hmm. But you can be around a book. You can be, I, we have information and resources we can give you for those four weeks. Mm -hmm. But it's just inviting people in. And for us as women in a church, that we create community and just be inviters. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think my dream would be that all of a sudden we have women from our church that are um, just intentionally having people over to do that. I mean, if we could at the end of this and you're like, I've been praying and I would love to do that. We would love to um, resource you and um, coach you along mm -hmm. in that. Yes. I told Michaela, I am available and I would love to walk alongside. She will too. And mm -hmm. she, you know, for the two of us and we have Shanna Beach. She's also another woman that said she would love to join us and mm -hmm. be a champion of a mentoring culture. Mm -hmm. And so I know Michaela is very um, thoughtful about this mm -hmm. and, well, and I love the word organic, and we haven't talked about that yet. Um, and you talked about the heart-to-heart -heart and how that was structured in the program. And really, my heart is that this will just be a natural overflow. That as, and as women and at the women's ministry, we just would be looking for women at our tables, um, whether that's at Bible study or um, like walking down the hallway at church when we get to meet, if you're going there on mm -hmm. Sunday. <laughs> um, and I know it's just such a weird time to... To do this um, but I'm sure that God maybe is bringing up and we're praying that God's stirring people's mind like their names in your mind right now um, of people that you could invite mm -hmm. um, to just join you well and I think um, what ooh, yeah, little, you're stuck. Um, one of the resources Tammy you're asking about these books organic mentoring is such a great tool and so insightful and eye-opening of really how two generations are approaching mentoring we look at the modern women who are kind of a little bit older than I am, and the mindset was that we were women who had it together. We would bring curriculum and meet regularly, and we would invite a young woman into our life and that we would invest in that way. When you look at this book, it really sheds light on the new generation of the postmodern woman mm -hmm. and the different way they approach mentoring. And for a lot of those younger women, if you offered a matching type of program, mm -hmm. 
that would not be at all anything that they would be interested in. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's That's almost kind of scary. funny. Like, they would see this as, like, they're basically getting matched with somebody and marrying them for a year, and they don't mm -hmm. even know them. And it's like they probably wouldn't even attempt to do that. Mm -hmm. And the way that they approach doing a mentoring relationship is so different. And so we could actually spend a whole evening just on the differences. Mm -hmm. And so if you're interested in what that is, we talked about this at the workshop that we did mm -hmm. um, several different times because I think it's so pivotal. But I would recommend organic mentoring and you would, you'll really like, I think you'll difference. be encouraged and inspired mm -hmm. to know that... Um, and organic, like it just happens naturally, and and so I think women just love, like the younger women especially, and I think all women. We just we like to be, we want to be real with each other. But something I have found too is that we also really want people to like us, and so sometimes that means that we put on a mask and we become someone that maybe we're not. We become the person that someone else wants us to be. And I think in a healthy mentoring relationship that we just, I mean, one thing that I loved about you is like, you just shared real stuff with me from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And I just appreciated that. Um, and that's, it made me feel like you were a safe person and that I could trust you with my real stuff as well. And that we don't just have to come and, um, yes, we're talking about scripture and there's a little bit of structure to it, but we're also just um, being real. And right. Being, you know, today is really hard. Um, I've had a really hard week and then you're like, okay, well, let's pray about that. Like, let's, let's unpack that. And, um, well, I think just that there's such time. freedom in knowing that we are in the process of maturing and being more like Jesus until we meet him. None of us have arrived. When you look at organic mentoring, it was almost like the woman who was looked at to be a mentor type person, you know, kind of had arrived. And what I love about this younger generation is that that is not attractive to them. Mm -hmm. They would rather have somebody who's authentic mm -hmm. and genuine and real, mm -hmm. that you're really walking through life and saying, this is what I learned. This is where I would probably do something different. This is where I failed. Mm -hmm. This is how God grew me. Mm -hmm. Those are the things a younger woman Definitely. really wants. And Melody, you mentioned in one of your comments how you wish it was more of a two-way street. Mm -hmm. And I do think that it is a matter of building trust. Mm -hmm. And so Absolutely. sometimes that just takes time. Yeah. I think for us, we had kind of... Um, we had already spent time together. We had spent time that. together. Mm -hmm. Kind of our hearts are aligned. I mean, mm -hmm. we had a lot of things that we already knew about each other. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was like we could open up a little quicker. Mm -hmm. But sometimes That's you true. just have to be patient. And it mm -hmm. just takes a little time to you have that trust and that kind mm -hmm. of commitment to, to each other to really yep. open up Definitely. in those ways. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see here. I, Jackie, I love your comment. I love our church for the older women. I say that lightly, that have invested in mentoring us all. Love you all and thank you. Mm -hmm. That was so sweet. Yes. Um, and Jackie, I know Renita is one of your like shining. Mm -hmm. and do you know how encouraged I am as I see Renita just mm -hmm. offer her life? And she was actually one of the women in a book club a few summers ago. And she said, you know, I think I am a mentor mom and I go to mops every other Friday and I love my women so much that I even had more to give mm -hmm. and Michaela was helping some leaders um, and a lot of you know Beth Sanchez, Katie Wheat, Shannon Gower and um, let's see it was Nicole I think at the time that they wanted to help moms who had graduated out of mops still have a place and an mm -hmm. environment to still grow mm -hmm. and so they came to Michaela and said can we start something called mom up mm -hmm. and it's the next step out of mops mm -hmm. and they didn't need the fluff and the program of mops they just wanted to be in a place where there was a mentor and that they would have a common thread with other moms raising kids to be in the word together mm -hmm. and just to continue to grow that's and really so cool. I remember Renita saying, you know, she had more capacity to give. And so it was really exciting to me just the opportunity to be in those like book clubs where we're going over organic mentoring or another book is um, this Giddy Up Eunice. This one is talking about three different relationships in scripture that just mm -hmm. are mentoring type of relationships and what those look like that's a fun summer read I this mean, is it's a fun we read it last summer mm -hmm. so that's why i say a summer read it's just it is. really encouraging it is it uses stories from like mary and elizabeth um, mary and elizabeth and yep. ruth and yep. naomi and it's it's 
it's a great book. It is. And so Renita basically was in that book club again, and she just said, I have more to give. And so when the mom up group grew and we expanded again, our little thriving plant, we're yes. multiplying. We went from one house to now three houses. I think it might even be four or five this fall. So it's really exciting it to is. see the growth. It is. And so Renita stepped in to do that as other moms have too. So there's, I think sometimes we just need to know this is a mandate. This is something that God um, wants all of us to do. You know, there's no exceptions when you look in scripture. Mm -hmm. It's not if you have a certain personality or if you're in a certain stage of life. It truly is that we be women who invite other women into our life and that we're intentional to surrender our life by inviting people in and offering our life to them. Mm -hmm. And I think some people may go, um, well, is this something that I have to do forever? Like, what does that look like? How, what are the different stages of mentoring? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've always thought one of the best things we could do is you engage and you start to be in a relationship is to set expectations together. Mm -hmm. So there may be one of you that has this idea of what you want it to look like, but if you don't communicate that to the other person, they will never know that that's what your expectations are. And it may not be her expectations. So one of the first times you get together, if you've decided to enter into a more you know intentional type of relationship, would to be to say, you know, this is what I hope this looks like. What do you have to offer? And then talk through that together. But I also think it's really wise to say, let's do this for six months or a year, whatever you feel like you have the capacity to do. And then we'll reevaluate. Mm -hmm. So at the end of that time, you can decide. It's not because of the relationship. You're probably still going to be friends. Mm -hmm. But as a matter of being in the Word together mm -hmm. and meeting regularly, you may not be able to do that long term. So I always say it's smart to have an on-ramp and an off-ramp. Mm -hmm. Let each other know expectations. And then if that time comes and you feel like I don't have the capacity to do this, that it's not going to hurt feelings, and then you can reevaluate. Well, I kind of think of Ecclesiastes season. It's like there's a time for everything. Mm -hmm. And I can look um, back, and there was a girl that God just put on my heart to be very intentional with. for, um, And it was just a really short season of time. And then um, our paths, there wasn't like a we're done. It just naturally um, just kind of fizzled out and that was okay. I think God had me in her life for a specific season. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it was about six months where I was walking with her and praying for her and checking in with her. Um, and then now, I mean, she actually texted me. She said, I really wanted to join tonight. How mm -hmm. can I, but I have to, something came up. So, well, and Vanessa, you had mentioned if you're able to join us tonight, one of your questions was, how do you maintain and keep mentoring relationships alive and thriving? Mm -hmm. And I think you're right. There's a time for everything. And sometimes those people are in your life forever. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those people are in your life for just a little while. Yeah. And you basically, for me, it's like a friendship that you pursue each other. And the way that it's going to be thriving and growing is that you just, again, that word intentional, but that you just pursue each other. And so um, one of the women that I invested in for over 32 years was a student at the University of Alabama mm -hmm. when I met her. And then she and her husband went to China and have lived there for the last 12 years. And we stayed connected from the time she was a student. I mean, wow. we would travel from Texas to North Carolina and invite each other into different ministry opportunities. Lots of phone calls, lots of text at the time, even letters before uh, we all had phones. <laughs> but I even had a chance a couple years ago to take Lauren and the two of us went all the way to China to spend two weeks with her. And um, we actually even talked yesterday and she's in a whole new season. Her family had to come back from China because of COVID and now she's got these high school age kids that she has no idea how to help adjust to America. and. So next week we're going to talk again, and she said, would you just help me help navigate through what this looks like for my sons and dating? And mm -hmm. she said, it's such a new thing for me. So here we went from her being a college student, single, mm -hmm. to being married, to having three children, to having this international life of ministry and really crazy life to even today still being in each other's life. But it's really because we pursued each other mm -hmm. and we just made each other a priority. I love that. Yeah, so it looks different. And mm -hmm. it, there's been some years in that relationship that we never talked. Mm -hmm. And then other years that it's like we're really regular and we talk. But mm -hmm. 
I mean, I could say that about a lot of people. Like, I have a lot of young women that have come and gone, lived in Omaha, out of town. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a matter of both of you giving each other freedom and appreciating what you do have to offer, but pursuing each other. Mm -hmm. That's such a beautiful picture. And there's, I think, another part would just be um, changing up the resources that you're doing, too. Another way to um, keep that relationship thriving. Mm -hmm. Um, Reading a different type of book or doing... Um, the soap method or asking another friend and her mentor to join you or something like that or hey you know what let's just go out for coffee and catch up um, I just like that there's different seasons and different ways to approach that time together whether that's just um, over coffee and literally just that's what Emily Emily just got married and so um, we started with the soap method and then we took a little time off from that and just talked about marriage and what it was like and I can't believe that I've been married for almost 10 years and I was able to just um, answer her questions and also mm -hmm. say you're going to learn a lot <laughs> as you go. I know you want to be prepared but just to encourage her and um, and then now we're going to go back to the soap method. So it just kind of ebbs and flows mm -hmm. I would say. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What the seasons are bringing. Well and I love to when I think of there's some women who are single that are in my life and others who are married. Mm -hmm. And when I was single and had married women in my life, I always appreciated and have tried to do this myself. I love that my single friends, and like a lot of times it was a young college girl that was part of my life, and she was willing just to come in and sit at the sandbox while my kids played or go to the barn when Lauren would ride horses. Um, and they were on my turf a lot. But I also was sensitive to making sure, and Reed was always really good about this, of tag teaming with me and saying, I'll take the kids, you go do something fun with your friend and get on her turf and do some stuff that she's yeah. interested in. So again, whether you're single or married, but you just are considerate and you care for each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what keeps it fresh is mm -hmm. that you're, you know, you give and take. And yes, you, it's definitely a good relationship. It, it is. Relationship. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, one of the questions that we didn't get to, and um, Shelly had a good one up here. It's already, I know, it's 8 3, so we're going to um, wrap things up thing. pretty, pretty soon. My words are not coming out well. One thing someone said to me when I was, asked, was seeking a mentor recently was the idea that we don't necessarily need an older mentor. We can mentor each other in our spiritual friendships. Do you find this to be true? I think I still love learning from an older woman. Hmm. Lisa. Well, I think when you look in scripture, it's not necessarily older in age, but somebody that's farther along in the process. Mm -hmm. And there's just some truth and validity to somebody who's already been there, mm -hmm. that they can have perspective. And um, I think you would know what I'm talking about. And I think that's probably why you appreciate those older women. It, there's such gold in those women who have walked before us, whether it's from years or just life stage. Mm -hmm. But I think Friendships are wonderful, and we need friendships in those pure level, absolutely. But I, I look, and when you see in you know the Titus 2 verses, it is that older women should be intentional to invest in a younger woman, mm -hmm. meaning farther along in the process, okay. not age. Yeah. So I don't know if that answers that. but mm -hmm. And I think, too, where we are with our church and the the heritage that Christ community has and the wealth of older women. Truly, there are so many women who have so much to give and they are not being utilized. And I think there's such a blessing that we can give to them by taking time to spend time with them and ask questions and learn from them. And Shelly, I think of your mom. She was definitely one of those women for me. I learned a lot from her and feel so grateful to have had her in my life and I just think we can be a blessing as I'm a younger woman to a lot of people as I am an older woman to a lot. We're, we're both, right? Mm -hmm. So um, just I think God's plan and his mystery and his purpose is that we be in these relationships. And so um, just asking him to give you eyes for that. Yes. And I love that verse, um, Proverbs eleven twenty five. Mm -hmm. Would you, I know you yes. have that one memorized. Well, when we're talking about mentoring and we are coming to you saying, you know, we want to engage and we want to inspire and encourage this culture um, in your life so that you thrive. But it's not to make you busy or to make you worn out or to mm -hmm. add another thing to your plate. Mm -hmm. Proverbs eleven twenty five says, those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. Mm -hmm. And we know that to the truest sense, when you give your life away, when you invest in someone else, 
when you surrender to what God has for you, you are the one that's refreshed. You're the one like that plant you're mm -hmm. talking about that thrives and flourishes and has those new shoots coming off because you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want for you. We want the freedom that this brings because we're obedient to the Lord, yes. to his commands and to his scripture and to his way. It really is. It's This is God's design. This is his way. This is nothing we're making up. Mm -hmm. It is all the way Jesus did it, the way God mapped it out in scripture. Mm -hmm. And um, we know it brings freedom and we know that it refreshes your soul. And so that's really what encourages us and inspires us to spend the time doing this. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll just take a couple more minutes to um, see if any questions, any other questions were stirred up. We know that this is really just touching um, the surface. I, we just want to have a conversation with you and bring up, there's so much. We could literally talk about this for days. Mm -hmm. um, and we love talking about it. We're both so passionate about helping women um, feel confident and feel um, called to doing this and helping them, um, helping you ladies see that this is a mandate that God has given us. And no matter what experiences that you have or haven't had, that you have something to offer. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe you're in a season that you just want to receive by, from someone and you're looking for that person. And um, I hope this just encourages you to start with praying and um, maybe taking a step to find another person to do a book with you. Um, this well, I'd even like to say another, I mean, really, as you can be looking yeah, at questions too that we can wrap up, but something Michaela and I really wanted to just ask you mm -hmm. is if you would pray and if you would be willing to do one of three things. One would be, would you consider inviting six women into your home for four weeks? We'll give you material, we'll coach you through it, truly just to create an environment for other people to meet each other. And spending a little bit of that time, one of the weeks, talking about what it is to mentor and just to be fostering and communicating this vision. Mm -hmm. The other thing would be book clubs. Organic mentoring and uh, adorned has mm -hmm. So many easy ways of doing a book club. At the end of each chapter, they have questions for an older woman and for a younger woman. So if you invite women into your home, and I know with COVID it may be smaller groups, but at the well, end of each chapter, you just have it all written out. There's nothing you have to prepare for except for reading. And you just ask the questions to the older woman and the younger woman. And there's so much good conversation and growth that comes from these two tools. There's also Spiritual Mothering has a workbook. Michaela has... Yes, I like, love this new... Um, it's called Flourish, um, and it's a new resource. And there is a beautiful book. This is for the mentor, and there's another one that's for the mentee. And so it's a year-long um, study that you guys can go through together. Mm -hmm. And it is beautiful the pages are beautiful and it's through scripture and it's broken down into identity and just different um different weeks and the scripture is all listed in there i know like psalm 139 or psalm 119 was many many weeks mm -hmm. of just studying that and meeting together and so it just gives you a good place to start it does and it's just a manual for the mentor mm -hmm. and a manual for the mentee and you just do it together it's all laid out for you mm -hmm. um i'm reading a brand new book that i think just came out in the women's coalition has endorsed this um, Growing Together by Melissa Kruger. And again, good questions at the end of the book. It would be a great book club or even a, a table type of conversation. Mm -hmm. We mentioned this earlier, Giddy Up Eunice, that talks about the different relationships in scripture. If you want to do a Bible study, Beth Moore has entrusted, and it's really the, the second Timothy verses, really just digging into what that looks like to Give your life to somebody else who's faithful and reliable that will also pass it on to someone else. And then um, Just Open the Door and this um, by S Susan Hunt, um, the Titus Two Tools of uh, Spiritual Mothering. So we'll list all these. We'll go back after today and list mm -hmm. some of these resources for you. But as far as not knowing what to do, there's so many good things available. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like you really just Where have, do we start? You do. You have so much available. Okay, uh, Shelly, question about organic mentoring. Is it only for women or would men appreciate it as well? Like for our journey group to split men and women for a while to build deeper relationships between women and men? Well, I think the whole topic of mentoring, I know with Christ's community, we do radical mentoring for men and mm -hmm. 
those men are growing and thriving so much. And I think the more conversation we have with people within our community to have these intentional relationships would just literally multiply our church. We would be meeting people in our workplace, in our neighborhoods, if we just had the tools and the confidence to befriend people and invite them in. So I would say absolutely. Um, there was a, there's some chapters in there about the woman, like the postmodern, and the, yeah, right. So there's some of that that's geared just towards women, but right. it'd be interesting for the men to to think about, and I bet it could translate. Um, it's just not necessarily like written in there right. what the man's point of view is. And I will ask Reed what tools he would kind of recommend because maybe the women, because now that I'm thinking about it, it really does talk women like mm -hmm. postmodern, modern woman. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if a man would. Be bothered by that but I'll ask Reed and we'll post that too of if there's a better resource for men um, so yes that's a great question it is thank you for asking that um, if anybody else has questions we would love for you to um, just write them in there and we will go back and answer mm -hmm. them I hope that this night has just been uh, fun and encouraging mm -hmm. laid back um, we would love to be all together and in person um, but we're grateful just for this opportunity to connect with you um, through Facebook Live. Um, and I just really desire as the women's director, just for this to be our thought and our heartbeat really behind everything that we do, mm -hmm. that we're thinking of how we can encourage one another, how we can invest intentionally into each other's lives, how we can take risks um, to ask somebody over to our house or to go for a walk. Um, and I hope this just gave you some ideas of where to start. Um, and once again, if you do continue to have questions, we want to be there to mm -hmm. um, ask them or answer them. Yes, you're not alone. You're not and alone in this. We, in every way, prioritize this. And I've told Michaela, and I know Shanna, we would love to meet with you and like customize what God's doing in your life and help you take next steps. There would be nothing that would bring me more joy than to do that. So. Mm -hmm. We'll connect over this, or if I know you, we'll figure out ways to engage in that, and along with Michaela. So, yes. All right. Well, is there anything else? We've covered a lot. We have. Thank you, so, guys. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I have to get up and turn off the camera because my my uh, camera guy is gone now. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yep. Have a great night.